Uh, hi, guys. I would like to welcome you all to Hello. the session. My name is Jane Waitara, DSC lead Drongo University in Kenya. Um, we are going to have a session on entrepreneurship. Yeah, I would like at first all of you to feel welcome and I hope you'll all participate well in this session. Please go on and click that subscribe button, like our video and yeah. We are going to have our speaker. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Yeah, we are going to have our speaker, Erio Lua, who is an educator with an active experience working on various education projects with social businesses, NGOs and the government, both home and abroad. He holds an advanced bachelor in managing business abroad from the Artright School of Economics in Netherlands. He, he also has a certificate in civil society leadership and management from Yali Regional Leadership Center, Accra in Ghana. He is a participant in the Leading Change Institute Nigeria. Nigeria, organized by, by the Stanley School of Leadership Studies by the Kansas State University. He is competent in organization leadership, strategy, consulting, business and product development, quality assurance in education, and curriculum development. Please let's all welcome Ariel Lua. Oh, yeah. So, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me, Jane? Thank you very much, yeah, Jane, for well, yeah, thank you very much, James, for the warm welcome. And I would also like to welcome everyone to the to the program. So, um, I trust we all are doing well. Good afternoon, everyone. So, yeah. So, we'll be starting soon, as soon as the slides have been projected. So, my name is Eriolu Adinka, as they have said, and um, I'm very sure we all listen to um, the little things that they have said. So today, we'll be talking about entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurial skills. But before we um, go fully into exploring what entrepreneurship means and what uh, entrepreneurial skills really mean, I would like to put some context, some exemplary context. So aside having the entire, um, aside studying business management abroad and and doing other uh, interesting things that, uh, that might be in the profile. I would like to also see that um, I myself, I practice, I practice entrepreneurship and I, and I still do that very active. So, um, so most of all of the tips that I'm going to be giving us and all the things I'm going to be discussing from now to the end of this session would be practical examples of things that I have implemented, things that I have practiced, things that did not work, things that worked, Basically, we are going to be working each one another like through the journey of how to um, own some entrepreneurship skills. So, so yeah, I also like to thank um, ECX, ECX in the lab for uh, for providing this opportunity for me to to come here to share a um, little bit of my um, journey with everyone. So yeah, so uh, yeah, we can move to the next slide. So today we'll be speaking about entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial skills. And um, on my slide, I have a little bit of expectations. So um, I have, I basically have five expectations that I want to meet, which means that by the end of this lesson, we are supposed to understand what entrepreneurship means. We are supposed to have an in-depth knowledge of what's the difference between an entrepreneur and someone that is in business. We are supposed to understand the skills required by entrepreneurs. We are supposed to understand how to acquire funding as an entrepreneur. And finally, you are supposed to understand networking and stakeholder engagement. So these are the five expectations that I have and that we are that I want to set together with you as we move throughout through, through this journey. So my hope is that at the end of this lesson, we are able to uh, to achieve all this. So if you check my slide or the slide that you can see on your screen, you would see a picture of um, of homes, like an area view, basically, of, of, of 
a particular city. So that's um, so that's a part of Lagos. Apparently, what I'm trying to show us is that oh, that's an ecosystem, and majority of us live in similar ecosystems like this. We have places like this almost all over Africa. So what we are going to be we are going to be looking at Africa more into the context. So most of the case studies I'm going to be giving are going to be examples taken from Africa, basically. So um, so yeah, so we can move. Yeah, next slide. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I would like to encourage yeah. all of you to tweet and tag at ECX Unilag and use the next conference as the hashtags. Please also remember to ask more questions on the chat section. Yeah, back to you. Okay, so, so yeah, thank you. So uh, the first thing we are going to be looking at is who is really an entrepreneur? What does entrepreneurship really mean? So uh, what does the entire concept of entrepreneurship, what is it really about? We could go on and on and on and on with giving a lot of um, academic examples and all. But that's not really why we are here. We are talking about something that we all would really remember. So if you are going by the definition of entrepreneurship that I have discovered, I've seen that entrepreneurship basically is just about value creation and value extraction so what we are trying to say is that entrepreneurship is not difficult we are just trying to say that oh what can you create value value that people are willing to pay for okay if you cannot create value can you extract value from the current situation that you have as in value that people the value that you have extracted people are willing to pay for it and if you look at that's um that slide about who an entrepreneur is. You see the word entrepreneur, and you see it with business, you see it with innovation, you see it with risk, you see it with assertiveness, you see it with leadership, you see it with team. So these are the literally two key important things that come with being an entrepreneur. So basically, an entrepreneur is someone that sells value. That's 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 it in, in, in a very, very simple way. So you don't need to go about saying a lot of things. Someone that sells value. It is either you are creating the value or you are extracting the value. So an entrepreneur is basically someone that sells the value. So how does the person sell the value? By innovating through a business, by having a team. Leadership also is part of it and looks like assertiveness. However, there is a particular uh, there is a particular context that I want to demystify for us as we proceed, which is um, talking about the difference between someone that is an entrepreneur and someone that is in business. Prior to this time, I I used to have issues with um, I used to have issues with being in business and being and one entrepreneur. It's, it was really something that I battled with for a long time. So I can also say that for a while I was in business. So the first thing I started my first exposure into the whole business ecosystem and all was that I was just doing business. So doing business means that I wasn't really creating a value per se. I was just running something for someone, which is not bad. So that's so one of the things I'm going to be saying today is that it is not like being in someone in business and so as someone who is an entrepreneur, they don't have it's not like one is better than one. But at the end of today, I really want us to appreciate the stage and the phase that we are right now and to know whether we are going to transition into another phase. None of them is bad. I have been at both ends before. They have been interesting. Um, I will tell us the advantages. I will take us through the disadvantages and we will see which one is, um, is, is quite better or which one we want to choose for ourselves. So I will give a little bit of context. So um, we know some people that um, they just, there's a business in town now and, there's an, and the next thing they do is to start or join that business train or to start that um, middle level networking or to do and um, to start selling that goods, to start selling that produce. What they are doing is that they are in business. They are not solving a genuine problem of their own. Like I said, in the definition of entrepreneurship, it is either value creation or value extraction. So they are not creating any value. The value has been created already. They are just a channel in what? In, trans in, in transferring this value. So it does not mean that they are an entrepreneur Entrepreneur. It just means that they are in business. So, value creation and value extraction. Extraction can be, oh, do we have 
a value before. Okay, can we extract something good out of this? So on my on the screen, you would see how I have um, listed the entire difference between someone who is in business and someone who is an entrepreneur. I've talked about how someone who is in business is just basically how to pro uh, after profit, and someone who is in who is an entrepreneur is basically after value creation. So as an entrepreneur, your ginger or your drive basically. It's not really because of the profit, because let me let me be truthful. If you if you if you want to enter entrepreneurship with the whole mindset of profit, you might get it wrong. So if you just want to know that oh you want to do calculated risk, then business is for you, which is not bad. So because it means that some people took the risk at the beginning and it is now being fruitful, then you are now proceeding. So one of the things that we need to understand is that someone who is in business has a calculated risk. Someone who is in business knows the price that is buying it in the market and knows the price that is going to sell it. So someone who is in business, the risk in, in, in selling that product is quite calculated. But an entrepreneur, the risk is not calculated at all. So you have to take a lot of risk. So these are the little, little differences. So, so for example, someone like me, I transitioned from someone who used to be in, a business, in business because I was afraid. I wanted, um, to, I wanted my risk to be calculated. I didn't want to take so uh, many huge, um, huge risks that were going to uh, that was going to affect me. So I started by being someone who is in business, and gradually I transitioned into becoming an entrepreneur, which is why I'm here today. So that's it. So that's the first thing. So it is all about oh, do I want to? Do I want calculated risk, or do I? Or can I take all the all the risk? So another thing is that the person who is in business is basically in business because of money. So, which is what we are going to see a lot of people doing in various universities today. So, you see a lot of students selling T-shirts. You see a lot of students selling uh, perfume oil. You see a lot of people selling a lot of things like that. These things that they are selling, it is not because they are creating value. They are not creating value. What they are just doing is that they are just in business. They are in a business that they think is profitable. There are people who buy it. If you ask them, okay, what, okay why are you selling this perfume oil? They will just be like, oh, because... I am bored or because I need to also or because entrepreneurship is not also. Once you start doing something with, uh, what are they calling it? Once you start selling something with the process or with the, with, the, um, with the mindset that you want to make money, then what you are doing is business, something that someone has done before. So these are the little, little things that I just want to create. So if you, so we have so many businesses. It is not, um, you're not being an entrepreneur. So it is better for you to call yourself a businessman or a businesswoman or then call yourself an entrepreneur. So I want us to create an understanding into that so that when people ask you questions in the future, you would not, you would not um, mix things. So it is better. Both of them are businesses, but um, the concepts are quite different. So yeah, so let's, so we would, we would proceed with um, other um, examples that are there. So people that are entrepreneurs actually go with basically some focus or so maybe for job creation to solve a problem to add value basically just about adding value which is not actually wrong it is a good thing to add value however at some stage in our life we have to transition so yours might be business for now you might be starting with someone being in business just to also or to make ends meet or something like that, which is very fine because if you know that you want to make a quick money just do business or get a job but if you know that you really want to solve a problem, you want to employ people, you want to do something, or you want to create value, it might take it time. So you have to just understand the current phase that you have. So some people move from, um, so I'll be using someone like Dan Gute as an example. So when he started business, he started as a businessman. He really started as a businessman. So what he was just doing was to import and export, like what people are doing. Like a lot of people can, are just doing mini importation right now. No. So that was what he was doing at first at the beginning. But gradually, it transitioned from someone who was just in business of importing and exporting of a particular produce to actually producing them himself to solve a particular need. So, so basically, so that's a value creation that he was doing. So he started creating value. He started um, creating value in terms of food, in, in terms of housing, in terms of and all those things. So I'm just trying to tell us that, oh, it is, it, it, it is not bad to be in business and it's not also bad to be in entrepreneurship because by the time you as an entrepreneur, by the time you finally create that business, 
that is solving that problem, that has that value creation and everything. Some people want to be in your own business. So um, I'm just trying to create some form of, um, of difference and explain the differentiating factor in between that. So um, the next thing we would like to, that I would like to tell us, talk to us about is basically what are the skills that we need now that we understand that, oh, entrepreneurship is all about value creation. So what are the skills that we need in entrepreneurship, what are the things that will make us become valued as an entrepreneur? So we need to discuss that. And the first thing I need to tell us is that there is no entrepreneur without a problem. So as an entrepreneur, you must identify a problem, no matter how little. And I think we need to understand something that a problem is a problem, whether big or small. As long as you are meeting a need, as long as you are providing providing solution to something, it does not matter whether it is big or small. It is relative. So a problem is a problem. So I understand that some of us, we have a lot of problems that we have found solutions to. However, we think that it is small. So we don't want to start implementing them. You are looking for that big major problem that we want to solve. Please do not just start that way. So that's the first thing. You just have to start that way. Start solving those smaller problems before you start solving the big ones. So, like I always say, uh, for those of us that we have a little bit of idea of science, we would realize that, or for those of us that, in one way or the other, we must have heard of the word experiment. We would realize that nobody does an experiment with something large. Nobody does an experiment with large um, quantities of materials. So when you want to do an experiment, we do it with small quantities. So those ideas that you think they are small, those ideas that you think, oh, 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 is it going to solve a problem? Yes, it's going to solve a problem. Is the problem big or, or small? It doesn't matter. Just ensure that you are solving a problem and you can, you are creating value that people are willing to pay for. That's what makes you an entrepreneur. If you are creating a value that people are not willing to pay for, then there's a problem. It means that you're not creating enough value. So these are the little, little things that we need to look at and to understand the whole concept of what entrepreneurship is all about. So some of the skills that you need to, uh, we need to understand is that an entrepreneur does not look for market. So it's, I, I laugh when I see, um, when I see people um, say, that, oh, as an entrepreneur, that they are looking for their market. They are looking for their market. It is wrong. An entrepreneur does not look for market. I know it's quite controversial, but this is it. You said that you went into entrepreneurship because you wanted to create value. Meaning that you, you wanted to solve a problem. So meaning that you saw a problem and you saw, and uh, you prefer the solution, a workable solution to it. So tell me why you are looking for a market. It means that the people that you should provide a solution to already are your market. So as an entrepreneur, you're not supposed to be looking for markets if you are actually able to define the problem that you are trying to solve at the beginning. So you don't have to start thinking of who your target audience is or start doing research about who, out, who your target audience is if you're an entrepreneur. Because your target audience is those people that you solve with the problem. And the moment you start providing a solution to their problem, as in that targeted audience problem, they start paying you for it as long as it is something that they can pay for. So you, it, is not your, it is not your duty as an entrepreneur to start looking for targeted audience. The audience that you are creating that solution for is your targeted audience. So we need to understand things like this. If you are someone who is in business, then you can start looking for targeted audience because you have to start looking for, that, for the people that that solution was created for. Don't forget that as someone who is in business, you are carrying another man's vision, basically, to see that, oh, you make money. So that's why, okay, if you are selling, sorry that I'm going to be using this example again, if you are selling perfume oil or you are selling this or that, you have to start looking for people that want to buy perfume oil or people that, need, people, or people that use them. You understand? So that is why you are looking for your targeted audience. It's because the problem you are trying to solve is not, is not something that you have clearly House. It's not like people are, are in their need of that. But as an entrepreneur, you have to understand that 
the audience that you have created that solution for is already your target audience. So you don't have to stress yourself. So um, for the skills, I need us to understand that as an entrepreneur, we need to understand that when you are starting or when you are in, um, when you are in business already, you need to take care of four things, four important things. Structures are quite important. So you need to take care of four things. You need to take care of your operations. You need to take care of your HR, human resources. You need to take care of your legalities. I need to take care of your accounting and finance. So why am I saying all this? If you see, uh, if you check that my that my slide on the screen, you will see that I, I I separated those entrepreneurial skills into two. I I I said some of them are operation now, and the other ones are relationship. So. The thing is that the operations matter a lot. So in my own definition, and from my um, little bit of knowledge in the entrepreneurship space, I've been able to divide the operations into two. So I've been able to divide it into the technical and the marketing and sales. So the technical and marketing and sales. So technical, uh, technical part of the operations means, so for example, imagine that you're a tech startup and all. The people that do the entire coding, the people that do the entire operations, they're the ones actively doing that in the technical part. So and why the people that go and market this product, you would have gone and figure, okay, this is the solution that you have found to your problem. Those are also in the operations. So you need skills for all these things. So you need those technical skills. You need those hands-on skills. If you don't have, you need to acquire them. So if you cannot do all this, so you need to acquire them. If it has to do with industrialization, if whatever it has to do with, as long as you're solving a problem, you need to get people that have the technical skills to solve that problem. You also need to get people that have the skills to sell it. And that's one problem that so many people have with entrepreneurship. The fact that you have found a problem and you have found a solution to it does not mean that you can market it. Sometimes you need to outsource it to people who can. So I've mentioned, the, the main topic for today is entrepreneurial skills. So I've mentioned the first one, which is technical skills. You need to have the technical skills or you need to get someone who has the technical skills. I can't say that I want to create a company that will be solving problem of corruption. A, a online company or a tech solution that will be solving corruption. Whatever form of corruption I want to solve. No one is coming to my, okay, let's say, okay, we are trying to deal with uh, corruption during elections. Maybe I'm trying to build a program. I'm trying to build something that, um, that, would, that will solve corruption during elections in the coming elections in Nigeria in 2023. And I don't have the technical skills to even code or to, or, or to do all these things. I have to acquire those skills or I'll outsource them to someone who can. And outsourcing is fine. It's totally fine to be able to outsource as a person. So those are the first things that you need to get. So technical skills, you should be able to outsource as, as a human being. Can you outsource them or can you do them? If you can do them or if you can't do them, you can learn. So yeah, so that's fair. So and sales, you have to get someone that is willing or you can, you should be able to sell that solution. You should be able to sell that solution. So sales is an important skill that everybody must have. You must be able to sell as an entrepreneur. You are selling two things. You are selling yourself and you are selling your product. But this is the truth. People buy you first before they buy your product. There are some times I will buy things from so many people, not because of what they are, not because of what they have is good, but because we buy into them. Because we buy into their values. So you need to know how to sell yourself. You need that like sales is the best thing, is the best skill that any entrepreneur could could actually dream of having. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to learn how to sell. So aside having the technical skills, you must have the sales, the sales part of it. You must be able to sell that vision. You must be able to sell that idea. You must be able to sell that product. So it's so sales is not even a skill that some people must have or some people should have. I believe that everybody should be able to sell. Sell that idea to that team member that can help you take it off from there. Sell it to that investor. Sell it to that supporter. Sell it to that customer. 
So sales is an important skill. So another thing we need to is HR. Human resources is quite important. So how do you treat people? How do you uh, how do you take care of the people that work with you? Team building skills. These are the skills that are quite important in our journey as um, entrepreneurs. Legal skills. So so you need to understand legalities. You need to have a lawyer, or you need to seek legal advice. As you are, as an entrepreneur, when you are starting out, it is important that you take legalities serious. You need to take it seriously with everything that you own. You do not need to start um, shining off and say, okay, ah, uh, um, getting a lawyer or taking legal counsel or taking legal advice is for rich people. Or it's for businesses that are ready-made already and all those stuff. No, you need to start now. So you need to own the skill now. You need to get it now. You need to get it now so that it's, you won't regret, so that you won't get into some partnership, so that you won't get into some into some deals that would actually be be uh, be painful at the end of the day. Another thing you need to do is accounting or finance skills. You need to get legal advice. You need to get accounting skills. You need to get someone that can keep the records. And if you cannot get someone, you need to learn it. That's one thing. You need to know how to keep your books. You need to know how everything can be. Your sheets must be balanced. So you need to understand that skill or you have to learn it. You have to... I believe everybody who is an entrepreneur is supposed to understand when they are making profits, when they are making loss. Simple, simple profit and loss statement account, you, suppose, you are supposed to understand or you are supposed to learn. Okay, what does it mean to have a lot of inventory if you are in production? What does it mean to... Like, simple, simple things like that. We need to understand it. Oh, when, as an organization, are you supposed to invest? You understand? So there's a rule that says that, oh, if, you are a business, if in, in the first four or five years of your business, you take your, you don't, you don't have, you're not supposed to allow any amount to roll over. You keep investing the money you get into the business consistently for about three years until you, under, until you are finally stable because so that your business can make that, um, can survive that three, years, um, that three years rule and everything that we have said. However, you need to understand how what accounting is and how it works. Or you need to get someone on your team that can do that. These are the skills that you need. So skills and your sales and getting the right people from outsourcing really with logistics and all those stuff. Or you, get, you have to get someone that can do legalities or you do the legalities yourself or just accounting. So these are the skills that are quite important. When you check uh, the list that I have here, you see leadership, you see teamwork, you see organizational skills, you see accounting, you see finance, you see um, legalities, you see, you see corporate leadership, you see a lot of them like that. These are the skills that you need to survive as, a, as an entrepreneur. So, uh, I've been mentioning those skills, why do you need to? I think it is important for us to understand why it is important for us to understand these skills. Why it's important for us to implement these skills. Why these skills are important for us as entrepreneurs. Because like I said, people buy you first before they buy your product. That is, even if people are going to work with you in team, they have to buy your idea as a leader. So you have to have all these skills. Empathy with your team members. You have to have excellent team leading skills. So for example, one of the teams that I'm going to give it up to Big Tech is the ECX team. They've been doing quite a lot of things. They have this particular, this synergy amongst themselves. So that's a good thing. And this wouldn't have been possible if, let's say, the team leader and the team members don't buy into the same vision. And everything you people understand what lead. some people think, oh, eh, ah, but this leading stuff, everybody is a leader. So in your business, you have to show leadership. So what I mean by leadership is if you have ever convinced someone to follow you somewhere, or convinced a friend to follow you to get a suite or to follow you to buy something, or you ever convinced someone at all to do something for you, maybe your sibling or maybe your parent or something like that, you are a leader. Because it's all about influence, changing, allowing someone to buy into your vision, allowing someone to buy into what you can see 
or into basically. So these are the skills that you need to understand. You need to have leadership skills. You need to empathize. You need to understand how to relate with people. Customer service is a skill that you need to own if you want to enjoy what entrepreneurship is all about. Accepting feedback, stakeholder engagement. These are the skills that I've listed here. So you need to understand these skills as an entrepreneur. You, don't, you do not just have to okay, say, oh, 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 uh, yes, uh, okay, I have an idea. And that's all. No, ideas are cheap. Your solution is not unique. What makes you unique is how you implement the solution. That solution that you're thinking of, about millions of people are also thinking of the same thing. So how you implement it, your attitude is everything. How you pull up the team, how you ensure, how you sell it, and the extent at which you solve the problem. Those are the things that make you an entrepreneur. So we need to understand this concept quite uh, like very well before we start our journey. And another thing is that for us to understand, another skill that we need to understand in entrepreneurship is that we need to start acting. That your idea is not new. Like I said earlier, it is not, it is not novel. Someone else is thinking of it. Someone else is prototyping it. Someone else is, we all are just building on each other's ideas and working on the feedback on each other's ideas. But what makes you wonderful? I know that you have that idea in your head. I'm very sure that someone here today is watching this life and is like, eh, yes, but I have this idea. And I have this, uh, you just keep saying, start small, start now. There's no better time to start than now. Start pushing that idea. Start selling that idea. Start pitching that idea for potential team members. It is a skill that you need to understand. You need to start pitching yourself to people. You need to start pitching that idea. I know some of us are quite scared that, oh, someone will steal my idea. Someone will do this. Someone will do that. You need to start. You need to ensure that you keep sharing those ideas. That is why I said legalities is, a, is, is an important skill. So if you don't feel so comfortable, or if you feel scared that this person you are going to be sharing your idea with is going to affect you, is going to steal your idea, there's something that is called NDA. So you could send the person an NDA form. It's called non-disclosure agreement. What this form basically means is that, oh, this idea and this discussion that I'm going to be having with you over this period of time, this person is not supposed to share the idea or this person is not supposed to execute the idea until they take permission from you. So if they, take permission, so if they don't take permission from you and they just go ahead into executing the idea, you have the ability to sue them. So these are the little, little things. That's what I'm saying. You get skills. So you could sign an NDA. So if you feel that you are getting scared about sharing your idea, about doing all these things, you need to understand that you can share um, non-disclosure agreement forms with your friends, with those people that you want to share this idea with, so that they will not steal it, if you know that that is what you are scared about. But trust me, don't be, don't, don't start. Share that idea with someone that can fuel it. So that's one thing about entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs do. Entrepreneurs are doers. The experiment, you share that idea see if it's going to work it will work if it's not going to work you will learn and you will learn how to improve at least you will know how why it didn't work and how to improve on it so i can i can a couple of businesses that i started at first thinking that i was creating value i was doing this and i was doing that and they didn't work but apparently i learned so i know why it won't work now and I know why it maybe why it will work because I've seen some people execute that same business and it has been fruitful for them. And I've been able to study them and I know why it works for them. So that's one thing that enter, most entrepreneurs don't do. Sometimes they understand why they feel that something, 
And sometimes they find it difficult to understand why they excelled at something. So, uh, so you need to understand all these things. So just share that idea. Don't be too, don't be too, uh, don't be too lazy around. Like, don't be too scared. Share it. So, um, text me to the next slide where we're going to talk about funding. So since morning, we've been talking about, oh, um, the skills you need, start your business, start everything, start, create value, do this, do that. I know quite a lot of us think that, oh, this guy has been saying a lot of things. However, how do I get funding? Who gives me money for my idea? The real I don't even have an idea. Okay, yes, I have a little bit of idea. And I'm not sure whether this idea will work yet. Is someone willing to give me money for this? How will I get money to even start executing that idea? I, I know that we have questions like that in our, our heart and hope. Which brings me to the next thing I'm going to be talking about. is funding. So now, the first thing I'm going to say is, that the first thing, the first person that funds your idea, or the first person that invests in your idea, is you. Once you cannot believe, or once you cannot invest in that idea, then that's the beginning of the problem. Then. To fund your idea. So that's the first step to getting funding. The first step to getting funding is to fund yourself. Believe in yourself. Build your capacity. That's the first thing. You have to fund your dreams. Then from there, you can now start looking for VCs, that is uh, venture capital, like organization that you can go to and they can give each competition to, compare, to, to potential in, in investors. If you are solving a problem in a community and it is a genuine problem, the community can 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 can, can decide to support you. And another thing we need to understand is that it's not all forms of funding that should be cash. That's one thing that we don't understand. Some people think that, oh, funding, oh, yes, oh, support, everything. It has to be cash. No. Sometimes you just need to leverage on some people's network. All you just need is some people's network. It will get you the funding that you want, which will bring me to the next thing. I'm going to be talking about about networking and stakeholder engagement. But remember, for the funding, go to sell, sell your idea. And if another issue I've seen with a lot of you that they want to start big, I know that that idea is big in your head. You have seen how you want to change the whole world. Yes, I know. But however, as an entrepreneur, you are supposed to start what? You are supposed to start small. It is important that you start small as an entrepreneur. You are not so you cannot start big. You cannot, as an entrepreneur, you cannot start by doing the big, big ones. I, like, like I said earlier. Nobody does an experiment with big, big, or with large quantities of chemicals, or with large quantities of 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 reactants or whatever. You are when you are experimenting, you have to do it little by little. And no matter the idea that you have, 
What can you start now? That is very important. What is your minimum viable product? It's very, very important. In entrepreneurship, we use that word a lot. What's that little thing that you can start from? How can you scale? That is why when you write a business plan and a business proposal, they will tell you to write your five-year growth plan. They don't expect you to start all at once. They don't expect you to have it figured out all at once. What they want is that, okay, how can you start from where you are to where you want to be? So what is that plan? Okay, in my first year, this is what I want to start doing. This is how I want to start. This is the small quantity that I want to start with. So you have to start small. You have to start little by little. You have to ensure that you are taking it one step at a time. So even when the funders cannot fund that big dreams or those big dreams of yours, can they fund the little ones? Can you start solving the problem? I know you are, I know you want to solve that big problem. I know that you want to solve the, the largest problem that Nigeria is facing, but can you start, start small? Can you start solving it for just one person? Can you start can, I, can you increase it to solving it for two people? 50, 100. Instead of looking at one million people at once. I am not saying that it is bad. You can't be lucky. However, it's not everybody that will get lucky. Okay, so for, your, for, for, so for you to start as an entrepreneur, you need to learn how to start small. or if I cannot achieve this big dream yet what can I start with so these are the important things that we need to understand so for the funding so, so even when you are going to investors investors will see that oh or when you are going to meet these people you say okay this person person has been able to do this or this person even knows how to start small this person can can start this way so like i said so that's it so because i know that a lot of people will be thinking oh ah, but funding is an issue this my idea is big but who will invest in me like i said the first thing you need to know about funding is that you need to invest in yourself first you need to fund yourself Fund your dreams, build capacity. You need to understand why you need this money. You need to have these skills so that when you start pitching yourself to people, they will understand that, oh, this person actually has the required skills for these things. So, the next thing that we are going to be discussing today as you got what makes you an entrepreneur, what makes you, uh, what are the skills that you need as an entrepreneur is networking and stakeholder analysis. So if you check, if you see the, if you can see the next slide that is going to be projected very soon, you will see that, um, you see a man in the middle connected with a lot of people. So what an entrepreneur does is to create a community. So you are creating a value. So you are creating value. So you are supposed to create a community of of that of of those that you deliver that value to. You are supposed to have a network, a network of people. You are supposed to connect with people. Basically, what? An entrepreneur is a connector also. They connect values to people, solutions, problems. That's what they just keep doing. They keep going through that circle of solutions, problem, value, solutions, problem, value. 
So these are the things that we need to understand. So we cannot just continue uh, and to say that, oh, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm doing it solely. No, you need to join networks. You need to join organizations. You need to meet people. You need to have no, but like, see, you don't, you don't have to see it as a competition. You, you need to start seeing it as, you need to start seeing it as more of a collaboration. You need to shift from seeing it as a competition to more of a collaboration. You need to understand that no one is competing with you. Because like I said, as an entrepreneur, no one is really competing with you because you are creating a special value. You are innovating. There's something different say you. You have your differentiating factor. So you need to understand these things. So the moment you start networking, you need to network with people, you need to network with, create joint communities that you can leverage. So for example, um, this platform is, is, is a nice one that you can leverage. We have all that, you can join the um, Association of Entrepreneurs, you can join the Association just ensure that you are able to leverage your network. Because that saying that, that your network is your network really makes a lot of sense. It is not, basically, it is not, not the people you don't know. It is the people that know you. Can they, they refer you? How, how, how wonderful do you treat your network? I'm not talking about only your financial network. I'm talking about your power network. Who are those that can open the doors for you? Who are those that can stand by the doors for you? You need all these things. And finally, in that space, I said net talking and stakeholder engagement. What do I mean by stakeholder engagement? It means that as an entrepreneur, you need to know those that matter. One, one problem that A lot of people don't know is that um, a, a, a lot of entrepreneurs make is that they don't. Exist. So there's one last thing I'm going to teach you all today, which is actually stakeholder analysis. So in stakeholder analysis, you need to understand those people that have high influence and high stake. You need to understand people that have. You need to understand people that have low influence and low stake in your business. So how like how um, how does this? Um, let me explain this in simple terms. So we all know that oh, your customers, the people you are creating the value for, you are trying to influence them. But there, you can be influencing them, and they might have a low stake in those decisions. So for example. Tomorrow, the government can tell you that, oh, they can bring a law that can, that can sabotage everything that you have been doing. So the government has an high influence and a high stake. The religious leaders can, they have influence. A lot of people, so you have to understand, oh, who are the stakeholders in this, my business? And how can I map them? So that once one person is talking, you will know those that, you know that. So for example, those people that have the high influence and high stake, let's say the government sometimes and hope, they have a high influence on your product and they have a high stake. Your investors, they have uh, sometimes they have high influence and they have high stake. People that fund you. So these people, you need to take them into consideration because once they say that they are not interested anymore, it becomes a problem. So I will give us a a general uh, a a, a general. Example of something that happened in Lagos 
in um, January ending around um, January 24th and uh, start implementation uh, fully uh, in first week in February, where the Lagos State government banned uh, the the use of Okada and and um, and tricycle like well, motorcycles and and halls at on some particular roads and all in Lagos. This didn't just happen at that time. If you could Uh, as our speaker comes back, remember to ask more questions on the chat section. Yeah, I hope we are all learning. Keep the questions coming. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So, so Jane, I said, uh, Jane, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, so I questions. Can yes. Okay, so wonderful. Okay, thank you you so mentioned much. sharing your idea. Yes, yes. Thank Welcome. you so much for that wonderful session. We have really learned a lot. We are really going to put ourselves out there. We, I have personally learned that no idea is small. You need to start small and Find yourself first as much as you expect other people to invest in your businesses. And yeah. So the first questions from the first question from Fuad. Uh, they are asking, you mentioned sharing your idea with people, but isn't that risky as your idea could be stolen? Okay, so as I have said earlier, if you are if you listen to me, uh Fuad Gafa. I said that if you feel that, oh, this person you want to share your idea with, or the people you want to share your idea with, you don't feel safe around them, you could give them a non-disclosure agreement form to sign first. So like I, I think I mentioned that, Jane, did you hear me when I was saying that you could do give them a non-disclosure agreement form that says that, um, oh, if I share this idea, or if I execute this idea, or if I steal this idea, without seeking the consent of the person that shared it with me, I can be sued. So you could you can you can check it online. It's called NDA. So you can just say non-disclosure agreement or confidentiality form. So you can give them a confidentiality paper to sign. So once you share that or once you give them that paper to sign, it solves um it's going to help you in becoming in feeling safe about sharing your idea with people. So even if it's with investors that have money and all those stuff, if you are scared that they will share that they will steal your idea, you can give them a non-disclosure agreement form to sign. So that you can always have legal backing if, if in case anything happens. So I, I hope I've been able to answer that. Can we take um, other questions, please, Jane? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh OPM is asking using Bill Gates, mm -hmm. Jeff, as mm -hmm. an example, they are the richest in the world right now, but still in business. Now my question is at what point can I call myself as a, a successful businessman and retire? Okay, so you have said that, oh, that at what point can you call yourself a successful man and retire? If you look at um, Bill Gates very well, when it comes to, uh, he has really, he has actively left um, the decision making and every, most like, okay, now he's, he's, he's on the board of Microsoft and all, but you see more of his work as regards um, Bill's and Melinda and Gates Foundation. He has actively moved for, into the foundation work. I don't know if you if you've watched Inside Bill's Brain. It describes how he does not even like how he just focuses on the foundation work and and see how he can solve more problems. Then aside, how can you? Where, at what point can you call yourself a successful businessman and retire? It depends on what your definition of success is, Okoyemi. How do you define success? What does success mean to you? So by the time. You and you are supposed to have a measure of success in a business. So it depends on when you call yourself successful. It is not. It does not depend. Like, if if my own definition of success is having um, one billion dollars in my account and having um, insurance to cover me till I die, that's success to me. 
Yours might be, oh, saving the whole world. Yes. So it depends on what definition of success means to you. And it depends on when you want to retire. So these are decisions that are yours to make, basically. So, so yeah. So can we have... Uh, I hope I've been able to answer that a bit, of Oyemi. You can always ask your, uh, ask your questions, too. So, okay. Yeah, we took another question okay. from Joshua. Uh, how okay. can an entrepreneur know the decision they make are the right ones? Guys, also remember to tweet what you are learning and use the hashtags, the hashtag, the next conference, and remember to tag at ECX Unilag. Uh, the next question, how can enter an entrepreneur know the decision they make are the right one? Back okay. To you. So I, I think, yeah, so I think the first thing is that when you make decisions, how will you know they are the right one? You need to seek counsel, like I said. Seek counsel, seek advice, look at trends. And I need to point this out. The fact that you made the right decision does not mean it will work. Let us get that right. The fact that a decision is right does not mean that it will work or it will, it will turn out successful. So you don't need to be too hard on yourself. Eh? So it's a journey for you as an entrepreneur. You are trying to see what will work and what will not work. You are, you are, you are, one of the things that entrepreneurs do is to own up to the responsibility, own up to whatever decisions that they make. You making the right decision is just saying that, oh, I think this is right. With the counsel that I have received, with the advice that I have received, I think this is going to work. So that's the thing. So, But because you are making the right decision, does not automatically mean that, oh, this right decision will means that this, my business will work or means that this thing will work. No, don't be too hard on yourself. You made the right decision, fine, but it didn't just work. It doesn't mean that it is not right. So, so yeah, so, um, how can, so how can you know? So basically trust your God, work with your team, and I think that's all. So let's, so let's move on. Uh, yeah, so let's move on. Okay, what's the hope of an entrepreneur who, after trying and trying, keeps failing? What does he do? I think, like I said, if you're an entrepreneur and you keep failing at what you do, number one, one of the important things that you need to do is to seek counsel. Go and meet consultants. Understand why you are failing. Add a team. You understand? Sincerity of purpose. Add a team and keep trying. Keep trying. And like I said, sometimes entrepreneurship is an experiment. Because you're experimenting something does not mean you get it at the, at, at the, at the first, uh, at the first uh, start. I can remember if any of us, like cooking is a survival skill. So I'm very sure that we all remember the first time we made a food or we prepared a food. We remember, we can, I'm very sure we can remember how, how wonderful it was. Did we get the desired results? No. Did we continue? Yes. Are we getting it now? Yes. So that's the thing. So you just have to ensure that you keep pushing. Get correct advice. Learn from experts. Pay for consultancy. Go and get help. You get. I understand why you are failing. So let's have um, other questions because this call is supposed to be uh, our one hour. Okay, if an entrepreneur has more than one partner, how do you think one should place shares or make stakeholders? Oh, yeah, so I feel most times when it comes to making shares and doing stakeholders, it is advisable that you seek legal counsel. Shareholders and all these things, I know it's not just something that you just think of in your head, okay, I want to give this person 2%, I want to give this person 3%. Seek legal advice. There are some people, there's, there are some lawyers that they are, they, are, they, are, they are more into equity and all. So they will help you to do that, understand what it really means and to be safe for you. So you'll not be able to, so, so that you won't make wrong decisions in future. You understand? And so that your decisions won't be based, your decisions now won't be based on emotions. Because no one, in the actual sense, no one, no one really cares about the emotion when, 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 when the problem starts. So I would advise that you seek legal counsel and professionals to help you solve that. So can we take the next question, Jane? Yeah. Okay. I think there are no more questions. Okay, 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 wonderful. There are no more questions. So so that's about one hour already for the call. So yeah. so yeah. So I'd like to thank everyone for, for making it out like to um, to attend this. I hope you all received value. And I would also like to thank um, Jane for being a wonderful moderator throughout uh throughout this session. You've been amazing. Um, I would also like to thank um, to thank Geek Tutor and um, everybody that works at um, and the entire people on the team of the ECX, the good local Lawale, Daniel Ejanodibu, and a lot of people that have reached out and people that are working. Like, you people are doing an amazing job. Like, 
the graphics content, the BCs, the entire um, energy and 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 work that you have put into this. Um, um, I would just like to say like um, well done and and thank you basically. So yeah, so thank you everyone for having me. We can continue this conversation on social media. You can still always ask questions. If you are confused, tag me on any question or send a DM. I, I would reply and answer this question. So yeah, so thank you all for thank you all for having me. So yes. So yeah, so yes, you I need to see your lessons, your take away, your comments and also yeah. So that is it. Yeah. So I'm gonna yeah. select to thank Over you to so you, much. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah, for having giving us those voice words. We are so grateful. Uh thank you to everyone who joined this call. Uh please remember to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and share your lessons on Twitter. Use the hashtag the next conference and tag ECX Unilag. And I would like to remind you that tonight we have a quiz at 9 p.m. at Slido. Uh, the game code is 2730. Remember to join in and uh, have fun. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you very much.